Today I'm going to be taking an older all-in-one computer like this Dell Vostro 330 right here and turning it into a monitor that can be used with any other computer. This Dell Vostro 330 is a reasonably nice computer 10 years ago. It has a first generation mobile Core i3, 4 gigs of RAM, and an SSD which has made it somewhat usable. But other than that, it's not a great system to have, it's pretty slow in almost every app, and things like modern web browsing is really pushing this system to the limit. So I'd like to be able to connect it to another computer as an external display. Unfortunately though, this system doesn't have any way to do that built in. The display is only connected to the computer inside the system. So I'm going to have to find another way to connect it. And typically, the board inside connects to the screen via some connectors. And you can often find that some company has built a little adapter board that takes like HDMI, DVI, VGA and gives you the little bit of on-screen controls that you might want and connects it to that onboard connector. So today I'm going to be ripping out the motherboard in this system, putting in one of those little boards, and then I should have a fully functional external display that I can use with any computer. So the first thing to do is find out what converter board I can use because there's no universal standard for all of these internal screens. So I can do a little bit of Googling and look around. So for example, if I look up this model of screen like Dell Vostro 330 display, I get a few results. And oftentimes they show me the actual LCD model. Unfortunately, in this case, there's a lots of very similar models, so it's easy to get confused. The most surefire way to do it is to just fully take this guy apart where you actually see the panel of the system. And then you can also see the connectors of where the computer connects to the display. And now I've taken apart the all-in-one to get access to the display inside. Unfortunately with this system, you had to take about everything else out before you can get access to the display. But now that I have access to the display, I can see the model number of the display to look up more parts and information about it. And I can also see all the connectors and their exact configuration so that I make sure that the one I buy will plug into this. So taking a look at my board, I actually see two of these touchscreen connectors. Not a lot of systems have touchscreens, but I'm just going to forget the touchscreen. I might be possible to use the little USB board and an adapter to make it work, but I don't find a touchscreen on a desktop monitor useful, so I'm going to remove that. The next two connectors is this big one here. This one has all the display signals that shows the display what to display. This is an older display, so it's LVDS. It was also marked as LVDS on the chassis too. And I believe this is a 30 pin standard. Unfortunately, there's a lot of different pinouts and sizes for these connectors. So even though your board just says LVDS, it's not always the same. So you can't just assume it's the same thing. The next connector I have is down here on this other edge, and that's for the backlight. So there's a little strip of LEDs right here that light up the back of the screen, which is what you see. And you're going to have to make sure that these connectors match whatever driver board you find on eBay. So I'm going to take a look at eBay and search up the model number of this display here. So this is actually a Samsung panel with like an LTM230HT05 as its model number. And looking it up on eBay, I see I can buy another display if I wanted to replace it, but I see quite a few of these boards that look all very similar. And these have a few parts and it's all you need to add to one of these displays so that it works as a desktop monitor. So let's take a look at one of these a little bit closer and see what it comes with. This big board here is the controller board. So it takes your DVI, your VGA, your HDMI and power input and plugs into the other things on the board. Primarily it has a chip that processes the signal coming from like an HDMI source, changes it to the LVDS this actual display needs and does things like display scaling and a menu because LVS displays do not have that built into them. The next thing we find in this little board is the LED driver. So that's what's needed to drive these LED backlights and likely has a little feature so that it can do dimming too if you want to change the brightness of the backlight. There's also a little button board right here where you can have menu buttons or something else. This is the same as the normal buttons you'd find on a lot of different monitors that come with them pre-included. And then you find a few cables. And that's what you want to make sure match up. Because looking at this cable right now with the blue leads and the very wide connector, that's going to be the big LVDS connector that would plug in here in replacement of this cable. And then this kind of multicolored one with about six connectors is what would plug into the LED driver. And you can't always tell exactly, but generally by looking at the connector, you can get a good guess if it's going to fit. I'd suggest counting the pins to make sure that the pins on the connector on your display is the same as the pins on the picture of the one you're going to get for it. 
Normally it comes correctly with these ones, and if you look up like a model number of a display, it will typically work. There seems to be many different sellers of these boards and they all seem to be essentially identical. So I just bought one of these boards that was relatively cheap and had a reasonable shipping time. Unfortunately, basically all of these come from China. So it'll often take a couple of weeks before it can get to you. But at 20 to $30, I'd say it's a reasonably good price for turning an old all-in-one panel that would otherwise be useless into an external display. So taking a look at what I got here is essentially identical to what the picture showed. So I have my driver board here with my display connections input. I have the different buttons for controlling the display and I have that little LED driver that can drive my backlight. So let's just double check that all the connectors fit where they're supposed to go first. Before checking the connectors fit, I'm gonna remove all these existing connectors. I'm guessing these are all Dell proprietary connectors when they plug into the board, so they're no use to me. Also removing all the touchscreen cables because I'm not using the touchscreen on this board. So when removing these connectors, they're often relatively fragile connectors. So you wanna be careful when taking them off. This one actually has tape holding it in. That might be a bit hard to see for me. So I gotta peel off all this tape. They often also have locking pins and you wanna make sure that you take the locking pins before you pop it out. In this case, it just popped out probably because I pulled it a little bit the first way. And then here's my replacement cable to check that it fits. So this one fits into my system, so at least it's the right connector that it has. The next thing I'm gonna have to plug in is the LED backlight. So that looks like it's this little cable right here that would plug into it. And this looks like it has the same six pins. They're different colors though, but it should be fine. And it just kind of slots into this little connector at the end. That looks like that's fitting okay. And I wanna do a test now. These unfortunately don't include a power supply, but they have a relatively common 12 volt plug. Unfortunately though, it wants 12 volts for amps, which is a lot more than a standard wall wart gives you, but I'm guessing a normal wall wart would be enough for testing the system. So luckily I found a compatible power brick for this. Here's a few things to note when finding a power brick for something like this that doesn't include it. You have to have the same physical connector, so it should just fit in easily. The next thing is the voltage has to be the same. So normally under like output, it's gonna say plus 12 volts, some amount of current. In this case, five amps. This one here requests a power supply of four amps. You can use a power supply that's four amps or you can use anything more than four amps. Having more amps in the power supply available will not cause an issue. Another thing to note is polarity. So these have two connectors on the outside and the inside. Normally there's a little diagram that shows which one's plus and which one's minus. This board also, asks for the center to be plus and the outside to be minus, which luckily is the same as my power supply. So it should be all good to go. I'm also, before I turn it on, gonna be make sure that none of this stuff is touching the actual back of this monitor, which is all made out of metal. It seems like this power supply doesn't work. And I'm guessing because the connector is slightly shorter on it, so it's not a standard one. So the little LED just blinks red every once in a while, and then sometimes turns green. I have another power supply that should also be compatible, though unfortunately a bit lower voltage than needed. And boom, that green light turns and stays on and I can see a little bit of light coming from the back of it. And hey, look at that. That's the screen for my computer I was using earlier. And for a little bit of fun, I'm gonna try using these menu buttons. And wow, it's in English. That's pretty awesome. And it looks like I get all the standard controls on here. Now that I know that all these components work and make a display that works well, I'm gonna take this screen and this controller and put it back in the old case and take out the old motherboard and put this in instead. And I'd like it to look relatively clean so there isn't a back with cable sticking out, but unfortunately this LVDS cable is pretty short so it's likely gonna limit my options. And now it's working as my new display, I guess. It's a 1080p screen, 24 inches, it's not the best panel compared to my MacBook Pro 13 inch. It's definitely worse than that screen and the contrast especially is much worse, but it's fully usable. I mean, videos, it's fine. Text is perfectly fine. Web browsing, nothing wrong with it. And as a test monitor too, for plugging into old systems, it works great. And for the 25 bucks it took me to buy that little converter board and these systems I can get free from e-waste and likely you might be able to too if you look around as businesses are dumping these often it's a pretty good deal for a $25 monitor. I also think I did a reasonably good job modding it. The biggest piece of plastic missing is the one near the bottom back, which isn't visible from the front. Also the optical drive is missing, but I could probably fill it in by using just a plate and kind of taping it in there. 
I put a lot of tape and screws to try to hold down the boards as well as I could, but unfortunately due to how short the LVDS cable is, I couldn't route the board where I wanted it to. I was just thinking maybe it'd be kind of cool to have like the board at the side, or I could have it at this side where the ports normally are, but the cable is just way too short to put it in any of those positions. Power consumption wise, the monitor is using roughly 24 watts from the wall, which is a little bit too much for my one and a half amp 12 volt adapter. So I should get a bigger one and use that instead. I likely might modify my older five amp one so that it works with the display plug that this one wants. But even though 22 watts for a monitor really isn't that bad, I do wish there was a way to adjust the backlight brightness. I tried looking through all the settings and there's no way I could change the backlight brightness. I could change the brightness of the screen, but that was kind of changing the gamma and how it modified the image going through it. It didn't modify the actual backlight. So I'm stuck at this brightness from the backlight, which is a little dimmer than I'd want, significantly dimmer than my MacBook Pro, but I wouldn't say it's bad for most uses in a normal room. It also has a menu system that's relatively limited in its features, but you can do like contrast brightness, gamma, color temperature, and that's about it. That's all you could really need to do on this display anyways. The stock settings look fine, but I played around with color temperature to try to make it look a little bit more like my MacBook for the comparisons, and I think overall the colors are fine. Overall, this appears to be a pretty great way to use an old monitor. I think this modification was fairly cheap and relatively simple as I only just had to plug in the new cables and put it back together without the motherboard and then just tape everything in place. It's not pretty, but it works. Let me know if you've done a modification like this and how it's gone for you. Thanks for watching.